What is good, gang? Welcome back to another episode of the What's Next podcast. And before I get into the lessons of this week, which I'll be documenting every single week, I just want to introduce myself because, yeah, it's about documenting my lessons. And one of the lessons of content I learned last week was most of the time, people don't remember you. People, we assume people remember you. We assume very important we assume maybe people come back but majority of the time it's new listeners so i just want to introduce myself my name is dominic and i'm an online fitness coach i run my own online fitness business and i help busy traveling men or men in general get into the best shape of their life with three hour workout weeks no cardio if they don't want to eating their favorite foods and just overall learning how to enjoy fitness while getting into the best shape of their life. And a little bit about me, I've competed in a bodybuilding competition. I'm going to compete again in December, which I'm really, really excited for. And all again, while growing my business, while not overdoing it in the gym, not overdoing it with cardio and enjoying my life to the fullest. So that's a little bit about me, but let's get into today's lessons from last week. And today I have five lessons I want to touch on. And before I get into the first one, I want to share a quick but inspiring story I read up on. And basically, this story is about a, a pastor. And this pastor had a son named Joel. And Joel was a very, very shy kid growing up his entire life. He couldn't look people into the eyes. He was afraid of attention, afraid of public speaking, afraid of anything that had to do with raising his voice. And, but Joel's father was a pastor and he preached obviously every Sunday to the congregation. And Joel was, or Joel's father was obviously like you are as a father. You want your son to preferably step into your shoes eventually. And obviously he sort of painted the vision for him and he gave him hints and he was like, come on, let, let's do it. And Joel was always very hesitant. But for some reason, 17 years <laughs> later, Joel decided to, yeah, uh, basically like 17 years after he graduated from school and stuff, he decided to, yeah, let me actually do it. He doesn't know why he did it, but he's like, yeah, let me do it. And it was awful. It was awful. Expected. <laughs> totally expected because how can you be good at something you've never done? But he had the courage to do it anyway. Then something happened that completely changed the trajectory of his life. Something tragic. His father passed away. And now that meant that he had to take the role of the, the pastor and start preaching every single Sunday, and he did. And he did an okay job. Obviously, with more reps, he got better, but he heard, the, he heard the chatter. He heard people talking about him and people talking behind his back and saying that he will never be as good as his father. And that honestly bothered, bothered him. I mean, rightfully so, right? Of course, he had a lot of respect for his father, but no one wants to hear that. The shift he made was, well, let me say this. He went from that, preaching to it grew around 5,000 members, which is quite big. He went from that to basically preaching in front of a sold out Yankee stadium and apparently beating the m memorial or whatever it's called of the Rolling Stones. Think about that. And... The Rolling Stones are massive and sold out a Yankee stadium preaching, right? Preaching his religion. And he not only did that, but through television, preaching in front of millions of people. And he went from a shy kid who was afraid to step up on the moment to that. But he was forced into the situation. But the way he went from just a normal pastor, right? preaching in front of the congregation to preaching in front of millions of people through television was through one shift. And that shift was the inner dialogue, the stories he kept telling himself. Because he was telling himself, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You'll never be as good as your father. 
And obviously, if you keep telling yourself these stories, you'll stay in the exact same spot. The shift he made was, no, I'm a badass. I'm great. I can do this. I can do anything I set my mind to. And as soon as he started making that shift, guess what? His life changed. And he went from a normal pastor to inspiring millions of people across the globe. And that leads me into my first lesson from this week because I thought that was so inspiring. Change your inner dialogue. Change the stories you tell yourself. Because look, at the end of the day, you cannot control what others say about you, but you can control your inner dialogue. And people were talking about Joel. People were, were chatting, right? He can't live up to his father's whatever. And he decided, no, I'm not going to let them define who I'm going to become, right? And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because you can achieve anything you set your mind to. You just need to change the inner dialogue. You need to change the stories you keep telling yourself. Because if you keep telling yourself you can't do it, you'll never amount to anything, guess what? You won't. But if you say you can actually do it and you can achieve anything you set your mind to, guess what? You can. And if you know a little bit about me, I mean, <laughs> I wasn't the most talented. I wasn't whatever. And I changed my life because I was like, let me just start believing. Let me just have faith in myself and be your biggest fan. Because at the end of the day, that you is all you got. At the end of the day, you is all you got. So why not be your biggest fan? And you can't eliminate fear. You need to learn how to manage and reframe it. Fear is always going to be there. Fear is always going to be there. You just need to learn how to reframe it as something positive. Because it's like, cool, if I didn't fear fear, doubt, uncertainty around something, would that even be a dream worth going after? A dream worth accomplishing? And if you can reframe that, to something positive because unless you get uncomfortable, unless you feel fear, how will you ever test your limits to see what you're truly capable of? So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is, I could actually share a story on every single one of these, but we are long as podcast. <laughs> so I'm very respectful of your time. So I just want to share the lessons. So be the smallest in the room. And I experienced this last week because I actually got a job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go into the details of what, but it's pretty cool how quickly your life can change because I never thought I would get this job and it's actually insane. So, uh, and multiple people wanted me and I was like, really, really interesting. But yeah, if you, if you put in the work, you can achieve anything. Back to my first point. But the reason I'm sharing that is because I realized, shit, like I have a lot of room to grow and that's amazing. And I was, I was the biggest in my room. I wasn't out of my comfort zone. And now I stepped out of my comfort zone and I got around people who were better than me and who are maybe on the same level or better, right? Who have different insights. And now I'm going to grow again. And that's exciting. So for you, get around different rooms. Now, yeah, don't let your ego get, get in the way of growth. Document the things that are going well. You can replicate in, so you can replicate them in the future. And this is a lesson I learned from a famous actor, I forgot his name, but and even Hamozi, Alex Hamozi, if you're not sure who he is, doesn't matter. But pretty much when things are going amazing, when you're sleeping well, when your energy is insane, when you when you just feel different and your life is like moving really nicely, you're accomplishing shit, you're feeling amazing, everything like that, literally document, write down exactly what it is you're doing. Every single thing. When am I going to sleep? When am I waking up? What am I eating? Who are the people I'm around? What is my environment? All these things. And I remember when I was really locked in, I was in Dubai. I was basically, these were my conditions for success. And just to give you a summary, it's like convenience, gym, I was shredded, bi-weekly, like got a haircut, which was really cool. Focused work, right? Cold environment, like I, I don't like when it's hot. <laughs> sleep, right? Uh, people that support you, protecting your energy, etc. So waking up early, no social media. So that was like, holy shit, like, man, I was feeling amazing and I was documenting all those things. And it's like, okay, if I ever don't feel like this anymore, what was I doing 
when I was feeling like that. And then you just like, okay, let me do those things again and let me see if that works. Yeah. So that's the reason. And another thing is that I'm going to compete in December. And for some reason, after my competition last year, I got lost. I started doing a lot of unnecessary cardio and I was starving myself and all these things. And I got lost and I was like, shit, <laughs> what was I doing recently? I just had the epiphany. Like, let me just get back to what I was doing because I looked quite good. So why not just do that again? And yeah, that's just a reminder, right? So document the things that are going well so you can replicate them in the future. Next one is leverage. And this is meaning what are the inputs to or what you have limited time, right? How can you maximize the outputs you get per unit of time. And since you have the most energy at the beginning of the day, what you want to do, obviously, is manage your tasks in a way that, okay, what is the highest leverage thing? What will get me the most return for my time? Put that at the beginning of the day. And guard your energy at all costs. So basically, what I did, for example, when I'm moving my client check-ins, WhatsApps, all of that to the end of the day, and beginning of the day is more deep work, more focused work, more things like sales calls and etc. right? And growing the company, all those things. And you can only get excellent at a limited amount of things. So choose wisely and allocate most of your time towards that. So if you think about it, right? <laughs> if you wanted to compete with Kobe Bryant, famous basketball player, passed away in 2020, one of my idols. If you wanted to compete with him, like you would have to dedicate your entire life to basketball, right? Because that's all he did. It's like, think about it. how can you compete with anyone who that's all they do and they love it? You can't, right? You have to do the same or more. <laughs> so choose the things you want to get good at and just try and only do those things for the majority of your time. And that's the only way you can actually become excellent. Because if, you, if you're distracted, you're doing a bunch of things, Guess what? The person that is fully dedicated and only doing that thing will beat you any day of the week. And that's even a reminder for myself. And the final lesson is self-awareness is key. Becoming aware of your thoughts, fears, doubts, bad habits is the first step to changing and reframing them. So you can't change something if you're not aware of it. And this is something I constantly have to remind myself of. And the way I do that is self-analysis. Literally, at the end of each day, most, of day, most days I am human, <laughs> I just think back to my day, like, what did I do? What didn't I do? What, how did I react to certain situations that wasn't ideal? And, and just reflect back, and then it's like, okay, let me do that better tomorrow. And that self-awareness is the first step to then actually changing your actions. And obviously then looking inward, right, taking the time, doing nothing, that's the key too. Just literally do nothing or just do one thing at a time. Don't always distract yourself and that will allow you to have these thoughts of self-analysis and self-reflection. Meditation has helped a ton. I think I've touched on that before. And ask others for feedback. Like sometimes we're blind to certain things. Just ask others, like, how do I react? Uh, what can I improve? What do you see? Again, put your ego aside because with ego, you don't grow. So put your ego aside and just ask other people, right? How can I improve? What do you see that I'm not doing right? How am I reacting? How am I communicating? How am I interacting with people? Whatever you're trying to improve, right? So ask other people. So those are my five lessons from the week. And the action steps for myself are... Sticky note, because <laughs> we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. And I'm going to change, continue to speak to myself as if I'm my biggest fan. So I wrote myself a sticky note. You're a badass. And I have, it must be like 50 of sticky notes right there. And I read them occasionally. And those are just my reminders. Because again, we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. Continue to get around people that are ahead. So this was a massive lesson for me last week, and I'm, I'm going to continue now to put myself in these situations so I can grow. Making more money, be better looking, or <laughs> more shredded, right? Uh, lifting heavier weights, better at communicating, better at content, better at anything so I can grow and learn from them. Then continue documenting my lessons. What are my conditions for success? So I'm going to try out my new thing, what I'm doing right now, see how it is, if it's actually going to work, 
then I'm going to document it just like I did in Dubai. Because right now is a different season of my life. That was more like, okay, meditation, lock in, focus, because I wanted to really get deep work done. A lot of, like I had a big project, but now it's like more reps of something. I'm not going to go into details, but it's a little bit different season. So I'm going to test it out. And if it's amazing, I'm going to document it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I changed my calendar for leverage. So moving the, the tasks that require less energy towards the end of the day and then prioritizing everything else or the, the higher leverage things that will get me the most amount of output in terms of money or just in general, yeah, money. What are we, what are we solving for? Money and uh, changing lives and, and things like that. So that in the uh, first part of the day and then everything else later, right? And what else? Continue meditation, self-reflection, and analysis. So my 12-week period, I'm going to continue basically uh, documenting, okay, a boom, 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 giving myself a score for that. And these are the inputs uh, I need to hit. I don't always hit them. Uh, I'm human. And then I give myself a score. And then I can continue to improve based on that. So, yeah, that is basically it for this week's podcast i hope you enjoyed it and on that i'll see you guys next week for more lessons have a good one